Due to new Chinese laws on these businesses' debt ceilings, the 20-2022 Chinese property industry crisis was brought on by the financial struggles of Evergrande Group as well as other Chinese property developers. In 2021, the crisis did not just hit Evergrande, it also had an impact on other significant real estate companies. Evergrande's financial default last year catalyzed the downturn in China's real estate market. The three red line strategy, which was tightened leverage standards, has restrained overly indebted developers. Large real estate companies are in danger of failing due to over indebtedness brought on by conflicting development incentives. Spread of mortgage boycott in China As the nation's housing issue threatens to get out of hand, Chinese purchasers are losing patience. A mortgage boycott has been started by a large number of home buyers who won't pay their mortgage on incomplete or stalled housing developments. Home buyers in 200 projects and 80 towns had threatened to cease making mortgage payments as of July 18th. There is $296 billion worth of mortgages at stalled Chinese developments. When tried to compare to a year ago, home sales have dropped by almost 60%. And the present continuous decline in sales, which has lasted 11 months, is thought to be the most severe in China's history. Analysts predict property transactions decreased by 25% between January and June because of China's zero COVID cases policy. As real estate developers lack the funds to complete the project, several projects in China have been put on hold. Real estate developers throughout China are in a desperate position and trying everything in their power to sell homes, even if it means accepting down payments in agricultural commodities like wheat, garlic, watermelons and peaches. The Trouble with the Evergrande Group A problem that began as issues with the Evergrande Group is now threatening to engulf some of the largest developers in the nation, its lenders and a middle class with substantial wealth derived from the real estate market. According to Pantheon Macroeconomics, Property accounts for more than 70% of the nation's wealth, 30-40% to of bank loan books and 30-40% to of local government revenue from land sales. According to a working paper from the National Bureau of Economic Analysis from 2020, China's real estate industry has generated $4 trillion out of the $14 trillion in GDP or 29% of the nation's output. Not only is Evergrande a troubled organization, numerous indebted real estate developers including Fantasia Holdings, Cynic Holdings Group and Modern Land, have defaulted or are on the verge of doing so. The third largest developer in China, Sunak, has also seen a significant reduction in credit ratings as a result of worries about loan repayment. Three Red Line Policy The Three Red Lines are a set of regulations that Chinese officials adopted in August of 2020 to restrict borrowing by real estate companies to more effectively manage the highly indebted sector. The three red lines requires that builders uphold a debt to asset ratio of no more than 70%, a limit of 100% on net debt to equity, having sufficient cash to cover liabilities, debts and short-term borrowing. Each red line that was crossed decreased a company's capacity to take on more debt. A company was no longer allowed to take on debt if all three lines were crossed. To conform to the three red lines guideline, companies were adopting a variety of strategies to move debts and investments off the balance sheet or pass off debt as equity, according to a report. China's local government debt was $4 trillion as of 2020. More than half the nation's GDP, or $8 trillion, is thought to be held in shadow or hidden debt, according to Goldman Sachs. China, the global creditor. Alarm bells are going out all around the world because of China's sinking real estate market. It remains the global centre for manufacturing, so if its economy deteriorates, exports from other nations will be slower and more expensive. Due to COVID-caused supply bottlenecks, numerous industries like the auto, consumer electronics and others have already experienced a slowdown. China is a global leader in contract semiconductor and electronics production. In the event of an economic downturn, this would only increase. China is also the developing world's primary global creditor. Hard hit would be developing nations depending on China for infrastructural projects. The Belt and Road Initiative includes many projects the Xi government has funded. BNRI projects are currently valued at over $1 trillion, 
and are located in 139 different nations. These construction sites, roads, power plants and other infrastructure projects might not be done. According to recent predictions from S&P Global Ratings, China's property sales are expected to decline this year even further than they did during the financial crisis of 2008. This year, national home sales are probably going to decline by around 30%, which is roughly twice as much as they had anticipated. Esther Liu, a director at S&P Global Ratings, said in an interview on Wednesday that such a decline would be worse than in 2008, when sales fell by nearly 20%. Due to Beijing's crackdown on the company's excessive reliance on credit for growth, the enterprises have had difficulty securing funding during the past two years. The mortgage strike is currently eroding investor confidence, pushing back China's real estate sector's recovery to the following year rather than later this year. She said the drag might expand to healthier developers if the crisis is not handled, adding there's a chance for social discontent if home buyers don't receive the flats they paid for. As property sales decline, more builders will likely experience financial distress, she said. Projections of Decline in Home Prices Despite the sudden rise in mortgage strikes over the past few weeks, analysts usually do not anticipate a catastrophic financial collapse. On a different note, S&P calculated that the halted mortgage payments might apply to loans totaling $144.04 billion, 2.5% of all mortgage loans in China, or 0.5% of all loans. According to the research, if there is a rapid decrease in housing prices, this could jeopardize financial stability. The government considers this vital enough to swiftly provide relief money in order to remedy declining confidence. Chinese policymakers have underlined their need to finish apartment buildings while encouraging banks to support developers. Since mid-March, authorities have typically been more supportive of the housing market while continuing to chant the catchphrase, houses are for living in, not speculation. We are concerned that the size of those efforts is insufficient to advert the current worsening of the situation, Liu said. But crucially, Liu stated that because of the local government strategy to sustain prices, her team does not anticipate a big decrease in property prices. According to their forecast, Housing values would drop by 6-7% this year before stabilising. And while S&P economists believe that real estate affects around a quarter of China's GDP both directly and indirectly, they note that only a portion of that 25% is at a risk level and that the company lacks detailed data on the effect of mortgage strikes on GDP. The new bidding process China's real estate market is linked with local authorities and land use regulations, making it challenging to find speedy solutions to industry issues. Director of the China Chief Economist Forum Zhu Gao noted in a published report that the quantity of residential floor space finished annually hasn't increased since 2005, while the amount of property sold has decreased on average over that time period. Before 2005, whenever a new land bidding process completely went into force, there was fast development in both the amount of land sold and the number of completed homes, he added. This shrinkage contrasts with that rise. According to Zhu, the new bidding procedure increased home values more than speculation since it restricted the availability of real estate and land. According to a report by Goldman Sachs, investors could only take into account the finest builders among high-yield China real estate loans. We find relative importance in their longer-duration bonds with lower dollar prices. However, the overall picture is one of instability in one of China's biggest industries. Credit strategist Kenneth Ho commented, to us, the ongoing pressures in the real estate industry combined with the uncertainties associated to COVID policies indicate a murkier outlook for China. He suggested a scenario in which credit fears persisted, but there were no significant systemic issues which would have a detrimental effect on investor sentiment in the high-yield credit market. That's all there is for today. Leave us a like of your thoughts on China's property crisis. Also, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the video and click the notification bell to never miss our videos. Stay tuned.